Today's adventure will bring me into downtown Denver, Colorado. It will be a very busy downtown day. It's gonna be fun. I ended up finding a parking structure over here next to a Union Pacific Railroad building that has been converted into a brewery on the corner of Wine Coop Street. $15 for all day. Downtown on a Saturday. As a recording of this, it is Saturday, June 18th, 2022. Denver has some inexpensive parking. And you see those two flags there on the end. Those are both going to be part of today's adventure. Colorado Rockies and the Colorado Avalanche. I'll explain more momentarily. Welcome everyone. Adam Zawu here. Last night when I was laying down to slumber, I was trying to figure out what I would do today. And I came to a conclusion or a decision that what I would do would be walk, go to downtown, which I accomplished that already. And from here, walk three quarters of a mile down to Ball Arena, where the Tampa Bay Lightning, the hockey team, not the Rays, I do not really follow hockey, but I would like to support the same, you know, the Florida team. What a coincidence that I am here when they are going up against Denver, the Colorado Avalanche, as the locals call the Avs, the Aves, the Avs. I'm just gonna see what the vibe is like down there. And then I realized that there is a baseball game in the same general vicinity. So about a half mile, three quarters of the way that way is Ball Arena, where there will be quite a bit of hoopla, I believe, Game one, this is game two. Game one, the watch party drew about 5,000 people in front of the stadium. They are expecting more tonight. And then after that, I will venture down this direction to Coors Field, where I will go to a game where there is a team I do not have any rooting for. It will be the Colorado Rockies and San Diego Padres. So it's gonna be an interesting day. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall we? This is kind of interesting. At first I thought they were solar panels, but I think they're just look, you can like look downward into something down below, maybe with like a greenhouse or something. And I normally will sport my either double raised cap, throwback cap, or I will usually be wearing the starburst cap. But today I'm wearing the TB because I know Tampa J always wears this cap. And he's in Florida and he's going to be watching the bolts as well from there. And I figured I just kind of wanted to wrap Tampa Bay in a more prominently definitive style so putting the tv cap on now there was a brief moment where i slightly considered trying to get tickets to the game tickets are 700 to a thousand dollars each and i figured i had never been to course field i've heard it's a beautiful stadium even though there is not a team playing that i really you know root for per se which the rays were playing there but that rarely if ever happens $70 seats tonight over there versus $700 to $1,000 for the, the upper, you know, way up and the, the sky seats. That seat versus that one for 10% for a game that 10% of the price for a sport that I, I love a lot more than hockey. I don't really know much about hockey. Spoiler alert. And as I'm walking along, heading over to the first stadium, noticing up here is a ghost sign. Fallon Supply Company windmills and pumps. And I've already got a, quite a few stairs. People noticing my hat. I don't know how many people are gonna be wearing any sort of Tampa Bay team hats through here. I don't know if a lot of Tampa Bay lightning folk would have made the commute all the way to Colorado, but maybe. Let's see what happens when I get over there. This is pretty neat, but these old bridges are now walkways over this river. There it is, not too far of a walk from where I parked. Ball Arena. I do have the walk signal, but I don't know what's going on with these cars. That was weird. Now this one starts at 6 p.m. Baseball game starts at a little after 7 for first pitch. It is 2.38 right now. And usually baseball games are an hour, an hour and a half, sometimes two hours before they'll open up the gate. So I'll probably head over there at some point, but just want to see what's happening over here three hours and 22 minutes before the hockey match begins. I do find this kind of interesting at three hours before game time, they're still setting stuff up out here. There's not really a ton of people from what I can see. I went to the World Series in Atlanta in October on Halloween night of last year. And even three hours before first pitch, there was just 
thousands upon thousands of people outside the stadium. Here's the 2022 playoff mobile with the skyline off in the distance. People are starting to congregate over here. I did see a couple people wearing Tampa Bay stuff, which is pretty cool. And over there in the distance is Bronco Stadium. And that wooden roller coaster is Six Flags. They're kind of in the same general area. Kind of zoomed in across the parking lot there. And that Sky Tower, I believe also was part of Six Flags. Now here's a mascot named Rocky in front of the arena. See the ball arena emblem up there. There's Rocky. Well, at least here in the little veranda, there's nothing, you can't, you can't not sell any kind of bootleg stuff. So no merchandise or anything like that. So you, but I'm sure like once you just get off this property, there will be people selling some stuff. Now for some reason, I don't think this applies. Why do they have an NBA fan code of conduct out here in front of an NHL game? All right, now that they have this inflated, I realize what it is. It is a, it's a hockey rink. There's people over there playing hockey inside the hockey rink. There's the goalie. Yeah, it's an inflatable hockey rink. I'm really thirsty. I don't know what it is about Colorado, but I'm just like way more thirsty than I usually am up here in the Salvation. And I'm really hoping the game I'm gonna, baseball game I'm gonna go to doesn't get rain delayed or, you know, doesn't happen because of the, because of the storm clouds over there. Oh, somebody over here selling some merchandise, some jerseys and whatnot. This is how stanchions are put in place. That's interesting. I don't even know what they're, not a traditional cone, but like a heavy duty item that kind of, I guess keeps traffic from going down over there to that other area. Take a look at those. They almost have like a pallet jack to get them in place. Point 0.6 miles over to Coors Field. Now where I just was at, the ball arena, probably another, I don't know, half mile, quarter of a mile, wherever to where the, where they were doing the watch party. Still on a quest to find a drink. Now this states this, this bridge was built back in 1907 by the Pennsylvania Steel Company out of Steelton, PA. Could have been a railroad bridge at one point. Could have had the tracks going across here. I don't know if it's wide enough for automobile. But I guess back in 1907, you could have got two automobiles across either side of this, possibly. Hello, sir. Hey. I'm sorry, on the other side. That's oh, okay. There's another one right here. Hardware store. Oh. Advertisement on the side of this one. Seeing all these scooters reminds me I have mine in the back of my car, so I think I'm gonna go get a soda or water or something to hydrate myself and then relax for a bit get the scooter out of my car and maybe cruise back over there right before the 6 p.m you know beginning of the hockey match definitely a very impressive building right there looking down this avenue into downtown 17th street and i get myself not only a water dasani salt filled dasani but also a sprite to whip my whistle a little bit. Okay, went back to my car, sat down for a bit, and then got my scooter. So I rode it back over here. Heading back up to see what's happening. This guy's got it on his bike. I wonder if he'd ever taken that in any sweet slides. And there seems to be quite a few more people down here milling around than there was about an hour or so ago. Everyone's heading in. Well, everyone that has tickets, everyone that's not at the watch party is now heading in. And I'm going to be leaving soon to head over to Coors Field. I did meet two people wearing lightning jerseys and they asked me to take a photo. They said, we know that you will take a good picture and not throw our phone across the, the little area here. So I did. And it looks like over here at Brooklyn's, they're having a watch party. Everyone's getting their drink on before heading. Now this is my own. I bought this one a while back, but take a look at this, all these scooters that are over here. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these. There is now a storm incoming. Boy, it is coming in, coming in hot. Standing under this little awning here, right here where it says, take your pet to a designated area. I'm just gonna stand here until maybe this passes. Yes, I'm 
All right, it's now time for San Diego Padres at Coors Field against the Colorado Rockies. I'm gonna go over this little ramp going over the road to head at Gate E, I believe it is. All right, chalk this up to another stadium to mark off my list. I've never been to this one before. Kind of wish the Rays were playing, but you know, I could not pass up popping in here while I'm in. And it's also bobblehead giveaway night. Here we are. Enjoy the game. Thank you. There we go. Got a little bobblehead. Usually what I do when it's an away team and I, I'm not rooting for anyone, I usually just give it to someone. So I'll just probably just give it to whoever I'm sitting and they can have two. Because I don't really have any need for this. I just want to watch a baseball game, but unless it's like a raised bobblehead, I don't really keep them. I don't know, it's just something I do. Oh, this is last year's bobblehead from the All-Star game was here. Oh, they're giving away last year's bobblehead. That's interesting. They must have had some leftover. And this is pretty interesting. There's a little forest back here in center field. I did not realize. I thought we were familiar with the stadium. I did not realize they had a forest out here. And that little forest over there is right by the bullpens. Imagine being a pitcher, like warming up, maybe a relief pitcher or something, warming up down here and then having the, the beautiful forest. And this is pretty neat out here in the outfield, out in close to right field. They have speed pitch where you can compete against others and see how fast, see how fast you throw. And they also have the home run challenge Except the home run challenge is completely out of order. I would have tried the home run challenge. I would have failed miserably, but yeah. I was wondering why there was no line for the home run challenge. It's because it's out of order. I'm not gonna buy any merchandise, but I'm just gonna look at some of the Rockies merch they have here. Some of the hats and t-shirts, caps and whatnot. And their mascot is a dinosaur right there. Maybe I'll see the dinosaur walking around walking around today. They even have gloves down there. Don't need gloves today. They do have gloves. And I kind of wonder, Tropicana Field allows cowbells in. I know Cowbell Max, a buddy of mine, goes to a lot of Rays games. He's always banging on the cowbell with one of these kind of miniature bats right here. I see the bats, but I don't see any cowbells. I know every stadium is a little bit different. I most frown upon cowbells, but the Trop, they love them. And because I have not eaten today yet either, I'm trying to decide on what kind of food I want. There's a lot of screaming and yelling. Nacho Supreme, Super Dogs. Where's all that yelling going from? What's happening? I think all that yelling is coming up from the upper level. So it's coming from the level above where I'm at. I am sitting on the third base side also behind the visitor dugout and the visitors today would be the Padres. There's a car up here that has the CR on it. Stands for Colorado Rockies. And on top of the vehicle itself is like a mountain bike. That's pretty neat. Maybe they're giving this away. It's Toyota emblem there on the side. Either they're giving it away or they just want people to know that this exists. A lot of eyes that roll through here see that. And I was kind of expecting no one to really be here because of the hockey games, you know, the, the Stanley Cup's going on right now. But this place is definitely a lot of people here, a lot more than I thought. All right, I've decided to go with the Carnito Nachos. Also, no cash here, credit cards only. And this is what we're dealing with, the Carnitos Nachos. I asked for a fork, so they told me the forks are down at the other end, so I grabbed a fork at the end of the counter. It's got the meat on there, it's got a little bit of salsa, some cheese, and some nachos. So I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna start off with this and probably get a, we get a hot dog at some point. Yeah, I do love some ballpark snacks and food, and nachos, I enjoy me some nachos. All right, just preparing for everything to get underway. Spraying down the infield there, spraying down the diamond, make sure none of that dust can kick back up when the ball hits it. The infielders. Also, there's the mascot. His name is Dinger. All right, I'm going to hit a Dinger. All right, so University of Nebraska is down here. Little Red, he's the inflatable guy to stand in there, and you got Dinger walking by as well. So. Maybe one of them is going to throw out the first pitch, but they are recognizing them. And Little Red is just gyrating around. Very, very excited. Little Red's the one in the middle, very tall. He's like very taller than all the other cheerleaders. And Dinger's all ready to catch the catch the, the first pitch when it finally happens. Also, they're bringing in this little this item here is what they put down. They spray paint around it for the batter's box. And now it's time for first pitch, 7:10 p.m. I am sitting in row 14, 10 rows back behind the visitor's dugout. First row is row five, but I'm in 14, so 10 rows back. Not bad, right here on the third base line. And I have no stake in the game. I'm not rooting for either team, so I'm just gonna enjoy the evening. Is 
change out at first. And since I am wearing a Rays cap, I want to see how the team's doing. The Rays have won today against Baltimore, seven to six. See it right over there on the top of the scoreboard. And I was asking the guy next to me, who goes to a lot of games sitting in the seat next to me, what that purple stripe was across the seats way up there on the upper upper deck. He's saying that's exactly one mile above sea level, 5,280 feet above sea level. That's pretty neat, so they call it the Mile High City. Well, they don't call it the Mile High City for nothing. This stadium is one mile above sea level. There are a lot of people here. It is kind of neat how they use that forest as the batter's eye right there in center field. Instead of just a blank spot, they got the green trees, which acts as a batter's eye. Padres just scored. Oh, safe at third, too. Safe at third. The action pack. All right, it's bottom of the fourth inning. I've decided to go ahead and leave. Yeah, I just didn't feel like sticking around for the rest of the game. I'll kind of explain a little bit. I mean, I wasn't really there for any other reason, so maybe to eat some snacks and, you know, watch one of my favorite games. But it's kind of got a bad taste in my mouth, so leaving. Not from the food. The food was, the nachos were good. This is a little tripod thing I've used for many years. Sometimes I use it with, with my Canon G7X, sometimes I won't. You can see it's only about the size of my hand. It's not like a selfie stick or anything. And certain stadiums like Tropicana Field, sometimes you can get in with them. Sometimes there depends on who's checking with the checkpoint. And if it's good, it's bad. It just really depends on, you know, luck of the draw getting up there. Sometimes you gotta put them back in the car. When I went through the checkpoint over here, they didn't have any problem with it. They said, oh, it's totally fine. So I took it up to my seat. And then an uh, usher came up to me and he wasn't exactly very pleasant about it. And in a very, I would say non-pleasant, a very rude tone, showed me some kind of rule book that he had and it said no selfie sticks. He said, if I do not take this off of my camera, I would be ejected from the game. I don't know if someone a few rows behind me was complaining or what it was. He said that someone, someone in, <laughs> behind me at some point was complaining about a selfie stick, even though really I just use it to hold the bottom of my camera like this. I never really like hold it like this and it doesn't extend. So I guess technically it's not a selfie stick. I didn't argue with him or anything, but he was really not, he was not very happy that he had to deliver, you know, the way he delivered the news was not in a happy tone, which was kind of confusing to me. So from now on, I just will not take this item in because, you know, I figured it's probably easier not to have this on the camera. It's interesting because they sell those bats that are like two, three times the length of this. People have gloves that are twice as tall as this and I don't even extend it up. I just kind of hold it like that. I think it was just the really condescending tone and the, they will, you'll be ejected if you do not follow the rules, even though I said, yeah, I'll just, I'll unscrew it. It's no big deal. Just kind of weird. And you know, the only reason I was here is just to kind of see a new stadium and enjoy a good night of, of baseball. But yeah, I'm leaving. Uh, it looks like the Avalanche just scored. There's another watch party up here and you hear everyone cheering. It's like a lot of people up here around the corner. Now look at how many people are over here at this watch party. There's a lot of people in here. This has definitely been a kind of a bizarre, different type of day for me. It's just like, I just been a, it's just been a weird day in you know, a lot of ways. It's like, you have those days where it's just kind of like a little bit different and you can't put your finger on it. This is one of those days. I think what I learned today, Big the Foot, is I will just only from now on take my camera and I will not take the additional little selfie holdy thing that I use, the Manfrotto. And I won't, I won't go to any more, any more stadiums unless the Rays are playing. I, I contemplated not going, but then I thought, you know, I'm already here, why not go? And I wasn't really 100% on, on board with the idea, but I went with it. And you, sh you should always go with your first instinct. Well, my first instinct was not to go to the stadium, just because the Rays weren't playing, and I didn't really know who to root for, or just... So I got good seats. I think I paid $70, $80 for the seats I had up front. Good seats behind the dugout. But from now on, just go to Rays, Rays, Rays games, and only take the camera. No additional little holder on the side of it. I won't even take my chances anymore. That's going to do it for today. I'll see you in the next video of the vlog. Is over. Yeah, I really see. Yeah. That thing really is obstructing the view there. Big time.